during these next few minutes of silence. You can focus on something you're grateful for or someone you're remembering especially today. Will you find a comfortable place in your seat and take a few easy breaths, whatever feels right for you as we settle into this shared silence together. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, spirit of life, source of all. We gather today on this chilly morning in many different states of being fatigued with uncertainty, anxious and energized, peaceful and depleted, sorrowing and joyful, tender and hopeful and numb to it all. Be with us this day. Remind us that every breath returns to spirit. Pull us toward silence and toward song and toward the next right thing. Show us how to find peace in the midst of uncertainty and terror. Show us how to offer peace to others and welcome it in to our own hearts, no matter what comes. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not love. Amen.
Our reading this morning comes to us from the poet Mary Oliver. The Gardener. Have I lived enough? Have I loved enough? Have I considered right action enough? Have I come to any conclusion? Have I experienced happiness with sufficient gratitude? Have I endured loneliness with grace? I say this, or perhaps I'm just thinking it. Actually, I probably think too much. Then I step out into the garden where the gardener, who is said to be a simple man, is tending his children, the roses. Don't just sit there, do something. Perhaps you've heard this refrain or indeed felt it rise up in your throat and leave your lips. We have to do something and there is much to be done. Perhaps you have also heard this, don't just do something, sit there. The exhortation by mindfulness teacher Sylvia Borstein who cleverly inverts our frantic desperation, our knee-jerk responses to terror and uncertainty. Don't just do something. Sit there. A rabbi looked at her calendar for the week and it was full to bursting with study and visits and meetings and the like. And a congregant asked her, Rabbi, what do you do when you are that busy? How do you even find the time to pray? And she said, oh yes, well, I pray for an hour every day, unless I'm really busy. And then I pray for two. Now there are versions of this story that feature uh, some Catholic saints saying, when I'm really busy, I pray for two hours. This is also attributed to Martin Luther. There's a version with a Buddhist monk saying it. There's um, a version with a rabbi who is usually a man for some of that old, tiny, sacred wisdom feeling. And um, all of them seem to come to the same conclusion which is that time spent in contemplation is important, especially when we feel that we don't have the time. When I think about my own spiritual practices, I, I think about them falling really into two buckets. They're are the practices that strengthen me, um, that remind me of my strength and my power and my agency, which are important um, just to get through the day, which are important to try to participate in movements for justice in whatever small ways or large ways we can figure out how to participate. Practices that strengthen us, that remind us that we are able, that after all there is something we can do, are important. And then there are the ones that humble me, the ones where I kneel or lie down, silent, and powerless before God, before the weight of the sorrows of the world. And I try to size them up right. The ones where we remind ourselves that the world does not turn because we wake up and decide it ought to. So I offer you this frame today in the event that it helps you puzzle out what you might do or what you are already doing to tend to your spiritual life, 
to consider the dynamic interplay between strength and stillness. Now, the purpose of a spiritual life is to put us more deeply in touch with the world that is and to help us dream up and participate in creating the world that yet could be. The purpose of a spiritual life is not to teach us to better accommodate ourselves to the crushing pressures of capitalism and all its failures. The purpose of a spiritual life is not to make you more efficient at your job. It's not to make you less anxious so that you're less of a bother to other people. It's not to confine you or make you behave yourself. The purpose of a spiritual life is to put you more closely into in touch with all that is, to know your right place, both that you are deeply and fully a part of it all and that none of it hinges only on you. So in the spirit of drawing on stillness and strength, I invite you now to let this song wash over you. If you'd like to sing along, the words will be in the chat. Katie, if you can hear me, you're muted in the chat. Great. Just really into the stillness, y'all. So we don't do this every week, but, um, but we will do it this week. I offer you the opportunity to use the chat and tell us where it is that you find stillness. And if you don't find a whole lot these days, can you imagine where it is that you might find stillness.
Beautiful. So there are practices of stillness, which humble us in practices of creativity and strength, which empower us. When I think about the second kind, those come much easier to me. I, am, um, I, I struggle with stillness and silence. And it's much easier to me to hike and run and walk and do all those other active things, though I do believe um, because I have finally learned to listen to my wise teachers that stillness is important. When I think about these practices of strength, I think about the ones that remind us of our power, our agency, the ones that get our blood flowing, that get our hearts pumping, the ones that remind us that it is good to have a body no matter what it can do or can't do. It is good to have a body and to be in a body. Some of these practices are more physical and more athletic. Some of them are more creative. I think um, uh, cooking, making art, um, walking, yoga, Tai Chi. I know some of y'all are doing a, a every morning Zoom Tai Chi situation, um, but these, these practices that are physical and repeated and require effort, um, they can be meditative. I mean, I know a lot of you knit and knitting can be meditative, but often what comes out of it is that you've made something, that you see evidence of your own work, of your own creative power, your own agency. You can think, I did that, I made that. Or you hike up a mountain, you get to the top and you look down and you think I did that. Or after injury, you finally make it to walk around your block and you think, I did that. You feel the gift of your own body moving you through the world. So in that spirit, in the spirit of those creative and strengthening practices, I invite you to let this song wash over you. This is an African-American spiritual called Guide My Feet. The words will be in the chat.
this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. So in the chat, once again, what are your practices of strength and creativity? What allows you to feel in your hands, in your own body, your own creative power, your participation in the race before us? Unmute yourself, Sadie. Once again, baking bread, exploratory conversation, knitting and fabric arts, singing, arts, crafts, growing things, cooking, the mantra, I can do it even when I don't like doing it. So yeah, some of you are saying this is not an area that you've actively committed to. <laughs> Close-up photographs of the natural world. Beautiful. If you don't really think about things this way, but you think you might want to, I invite you to send me an email. I would love to talk with any of you about the disciplines and habit habits that you're building into your lives to humble you and to strengthen you and to see you through. So, May these practices of strength and stillness keep you good company, no matter what comes. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. One of the ways that we actively uh, live out our mission is to, to create loving community, is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community partners. Our offering for the time being goes to Greensboro Mutual Aid. The city has resumed payment collections and water shutoffs. So it's particularly important that we contribute to this fund that will help keep people's bills paid and utilities on. Remember, it didn't have to be this way, but since it is, we will do our part to fill the gap. 
If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the church, you can do so at the link in our chat and indicate COVID in the memo line. Our offering will now gratefully be received.